Hey guys, so yesterday I had a student ask me what are the systems that work really closely with the urinary or renal system and I thought that was a really great question. So technically all systems work together and they all influence each other at some to some degree but there are two systems that work very closely with the renal system. Can you guess what they are? So up here we have our renal system and here we have our cardiovascular. You can also call it the circulatory. And remember our cardiovascular is referring to the heart and all of the blood vessels. And over here we have the endocrine system. These three systems are closely related because they all help regulate, can you guess what? Blood volume, okay? And what does blood volume influence? It influences blood pressure. So blood pressure is pretty much the main thing that all these three systems help regulate. For example, the endocrine system releases hormones. Let's just say it releases ADH, antidiuretic hormone. By the way, antidiuretic hormone, you absolutely must know this for your T's exam. It's very high yield hormone. So let's just say endocrine system releases ADH. What effect is it going to have on the circulatory system? Well, it's going to cause vasoconstriction. Vasoconstrictions means that the blood vessels are going to narrow. And then what effect does ADH have on the renal system? It's going to cause H2O reabsorption. Now, what are these two things going to result in? So it's going to result in an increase in blood volume, and that is going to result in an increase in blood pressure, BP, okay? So ADH released by the endocrine system, ADH affects the cardiovascular system because it, it causes vasoconstriction. It also affects the renal system because it tells the renal system to reabsorb H2. And what happens when you have reabsorption of water in the body? Well, it goes to our blood and it increases the blood volume and blood pressure. Okay, so let's look at another example. Our next example is aldosterone. So our aldosterone is released by the adrenal glands. Remember that those sit right on top of your kidneys, adrenal glands. Okay, so when aldosterone is released, it affects the circulatory system because it also causes vasoconstriction. Remember, vasoconstriction is when the blood vessels, they get more narrow. And then it also affects the renal system because it tells the kidneys to reabsorb sodium. When you reabsorb sodium, remember water follows sodium, so you're pretty much reabsorbing water, which we know what is the result of reabsorption of water and vasoconstriction? Increased blood volume and increased blood pressure. So here, aldosterone in causes vasoconstriction and it increases sodium reabsorption in the kidneys, which increases H2O reabsorption. And these two things result in increased blood volume and increased blood pressure. So aldosterone and ADH are both going to increase your blood pressure. So our next example is going to be right here in the cardiovascular system. It's 
specifically here in the heart is where it starts. So if a person has high blood volume or high blood pressure and it gets to an extreme point, this is what happens. In the heart, the heart walls are going to feel this stretch and this tension. And that signifies that the blood pressure is too high or the blood volume. So what they're going to do is they're going to release natriuretic peptides. Okay, now there are specific natriuretic peptides. If you're in pre-nursing, you really don't need to know what they are. Just know natriuretic peptides are released by the heart when there's high blood pressure or high blood volume. Okay, how are these natriuretic peptides going to affect the renal system and the endocrine system? So the first thing, the first thing it does is it causes vasodilation. Remember, vasodilation is going to increase the diameter of your blood vessels. It's going to make them bigger, which is the opposite of what aldosterone and ADH do. Secondly, it is going to stop the release of aldosterone. And that stopping the release of aldosterone affects obviously the endocrine system because it's a hormone and it affects the renal system because aldosterone directly affects the kidneys, right? If you have increase in aldosterone, you're going to have an increase in sodium reabsorption, which is going to increase your fluid, your water reabsorption. Now, if we have a stop in the release of aldosterone, we're gonna have the opposite effect. You're gonna have a decrease in sodium reabsorption so you're gonna have a decrease in water reabsorption, right? By the way, as a bonus, what happens when you have decrease in water reabsorption? You have an increase in urine production or an increase in urine output, right? So that's what's gonna happen here. Natriuretic peptide is triggered by an increase in blood volume and an increase in blood pressure, okay? Now, Aldosterone and ADH are triggered by a decrease in blood volume and a decrease in blood pressure. Both of these work to increase blood volume, increase blood pressure. Okay, so they're basically doing the opposite of this. And I should write over here. So the result of vasodilation and the stop of release of aldosterone is going to be decreased blood volume and decreased blood pressure. Now, I just want to review this one more time okay let's just say a person has really high blood volume or blood pressure which of these three are going to be triggered your natriuretic peptides are going to be triggered right and they're going to try and counteract by doing these actions and this is going to be the result now what happens if a person has low blood volume and low blood pressure. Which of these are going to be triggered? Your aldosterone and your ADH are going to be triggered and they're going to try and counteract this by doing vasoconstriction and by doing H2O reabsorption and they're going to result in a higher BV blood volume and a higher BP blood pressure. By the way, um, I just want to say one more thing. A lot of people are like, why would you want to increase blood pressure? Aren't we always trying to decrease blood pressure? Isn't, you know, too high blood pressure like a bad thing? Well, the reason why is people who go through, let's just say severe, I'm going to put severe because it's not just normal dehydration, but severe dehydration can have a low blood volume. Another one is trauma. So let's just say someone has an amputation or a gunshot wound or something. Um, yeah, they're going to lose a lot of blood. So you could say blood loss. So some trauma to the body causing major blood loss can cause a decrease in blood volume and blood pressure. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, as far as the T's exam goes, if you're here for that, you have to know the the um, connection between renal system endocrine system and cardiovascular system you absolutely have to know adh um secondary you want to know aldosterone and maybe want to know natriuretic peptides 
And if you are entering nursing school or you're in nursing school, absolutely, it's a must. You have to know this like triangle right here. Know the connections between this. And blood pressure regulation pretty much affects everything in your body, so very important. All right, thanks for sticking around, you guys. I hope you learned something new. Until next time.